اہلا و سہلا بکم جمیعا وی آر ناؤ ان لیکچر ٹوینٹی ویئر وی گن ٹاک اباؤٹ پریشر ڈراپ اینڈ پیک بیڈ ری ایکٹر بفور وی بیگن لیم یو آسک سم تھنگ ریلیٹڈ ٹو پیک بیڈ ری ایکٹر وچ از دا ریٹ آف ریئیکشن سو وی وانٹ ٹو رائٹ اے ڈائمینشنل ایکویشن ٹو کنورٹ مائنس آر اے پرائم which is the rate of reaction based on the weight of catalyst we want to convert it to minus ra which is the rate of reaction based on the volume of the reactor okay so you all know that the relationship can be written by looking at the units right it's like conversion so let's see minus ra equals rho b times minus r a prime so you can actually convert minus r a prime to minus r a by using the rho b which is the bulk density of the bed what is the bulk density of the bed it's the it's this it's the density of the bed which is simply the mass of the bed divided by the volume of the bed but of course the mass of the bed is coming from the mass of the catalyst right okay so let's look at this equation so if we have rho b which is the mass of the catalyst divided by the volume of the bed and it is multiplied by minus r a prime which is mole of a reacted per mass of the catalyst correct per let's say time right second minute whatever okay so let's see in this case the mass of the catalyst cancels out with the mass of the catalyst so you remained with moles of a moles of a per unit time per volume of the bed so now it the rate is per volume right and therefore this is known as minus r a and this is how i convert minus r a prime to minus r a okay why do we need to talk about pressure drop we need to talk about pressure drop because we want to design the second reactor in our chemical plant ethylene glycol chemical plant so the second reactor we have the reaction of ethylene that we produce in the first reactor with oxygen to form ethylene oxide however in order to run this reaction and carry out a partial oxidation without combusting the ethylene we need to use a catalyst and this catalyst is packed inside this tube therefore it's a packed bed reactor and you all know that if we there is a flow through a packed bed there is pressure drop and hence we need to study about pressure drop okay pressure drop and the rate law so the question is does the pressure drop affect the rate law does it affect the rate of reaction well we all know that the pressure drop affects the pressure right and if we have liquid phase reaction the pressure in fact does not affect the volumetric flow rate of the reaction mixture therefore the concentration is not affected by the pressure therefore the rate of reaction is not affected either however if you have a gas phase reaction as the pressure decreases the volumetric flow rate increases that means you will have lower concentration compared to the case where you don't have a pressure drop and therefore if you have lower concentration that means you'll end up with lower rate of reaction all of that in a gas phase reaction okay so let's consider a gas phase second order reaction that is to be carried out in an isothermal packed bed reactor 
let's consider this reaction 2a goes to b write the differential form of the design equation in terms of catalyst weight so this is the design equation if a naught dx over dy dw gives you minus ra prime and of course you follow the design equation with a rate law this is the rate law it's a second order reaction and then you utilize the stoichiometry correct so by utilizing the stoichiometry you will end up with this equation of course you have to start with ca equals fa over epsilon and then you say what fa equals as a function of x and what epsilon equals as a function of x as well okay and we end up with this equation type so let's see let's see what is the effect of the pressure drop on epsilon hmm and what is its effect on ca and what what uh, is, what is its effect on minus ra and x okay so we know that epsilon equals epsilon naught let me write it down somewhere maybe here epsilon equals epsilon naught one plus epsilon x times t over t naught times p naught over p correct so epsilon equals epsilon naught times the three correction factors and you know that if you have a pressure drop you will end up with lower pressure so you have a lower pressure if this is lower then this quantity is higher therefore the volumetric flow rate increases and that makes sense simply because there is no enough pressure to hold the molecules close to each other so if the pressure reduces the gas expands and the volumetric flow rate increases and if the volumetric flow rate increases let's look at this ca equals fa over epsilon if volumetric flow rate increases the concentration decreases correct so again we can look we can see it here as well if you have lower pressure you will have lower concentration lower concentration means lower rate of reaction right lower rate of reaction means lower conversion okay so the larger the pressure drop from fractional losses the smaller the reaction rate let's combine all of the above equations and we get this equation type this equation me implies that for an isothermal operation dx by dw dx by dw is function of x right function of x and as well as the pressure okay so we write it here now if we want to solve dx by dw to design the reactor to find the value of w for a desired x or to find the value of x for a given w you need to integrate this equation you need you need p as a function of w correct so where are you gonna get this where are you gonna get this so first you need p as a function of w or or you can say a well, lot uh, we need if we don't get p as a function of w let's at least get a differential equation that is dp by dw let's get that let's get that so and obviously dp by dw would also be a function of x and p and maybe t if the operation was not isothermal okay now which equation you will solve first this one or this one of course these two equations has have to be solved continuously okay so let's discuss flow through a packed bed the majority of gas phase reactions are catalyzed by passing the reactants through a packed bed of catalyst particles the reaction mixture will pass through the packed bed but at the expense of pressure meaning the pressure will drop so you'll have a pressure drop the pressure drop is due to friction which is 
produced at the surface of the packing of course more surface you have now because it's not only the surface of the tube it's the surface of the particle as well so as the flow goes by the flows over the surfaces there is friction and friction causes pressure drop the equation used most to calculate pressure drop in a packed porous bed is the Ergen equation you know that already from fluid mechanics and this is how it looks like hmm. so you have a bunch of stuff here multiply by term 1 plus term 2 in fact term 1 this term is dominant for laminar flow while term 2 is dominant for turbulent flow. So you can look at this figure which is from, which I got it from your fluid mechanics book you can see a very small Reynolds number here you see here 150 right and a very larger number where you have turbulent flow the number here is 1.75 and so on okay so let's get to learn about Ergen equation let's understand each term and what it means P P is the pressure of course it has to be the absolute pressure phi phi is the porosity or also known as void fraction which is the volume of void divided by the total bed volume so you take the bed you look at the bed here and of course the bed consists of particles catalyst particles packed inside this tube and then you have some voids between these particles so the volume of void divided by the total bit volume is known as the void fraction obviously in this case 1 minus phi will be the solid fraction correct will be the solid fraction will be the volume of solid divided by the total bit volume and then you have the gc which is the conversion factor and you know that gc for si units is one then we have dp dp here we go this is dp okay so if you have dp let's learn what dp is dp is the diameter of the particle in the bed so each of these particles what's the diameter of each of these particles okay what if the particle was not spherical then we get the equivalent spherical diameter of the particle defined as dp equals six times the volume of the particle divided by the surface area of the particle then we have mu mu here we go mu which is the viscosity of gas passing through the bed then we have z and z is the length down the packed bed of pipe u we have u what is u let's understand what u is u is the u is the superficial velocity superficial velocity how do you calculate the superficial velocity so it's not the actual velocity it's the superficial velocity you take the volumetric flow rate the volumetric flow rate right just before it flows into that bed or at any given location and you divide it by the cross-sectional area of the pipe as if the pipe was empty so this gives you the superficial velocity what would be the velocity if the if the bed if there was no packing and you have rho rho it's the gas density and you have g which is rho times u we just talked about u being the superficial velocity therefore the g is the superficial mass velocity superficial mass velocity let's look at the unit hmm it's kilogram per unit area per second so this is like a flux right it's a mass flux that's the other name of g mass pipe so in calculating the pressure drop if you want to calculate the pressure drop that means you need to integrate the only parameter that varies significantly with pressure on the right hand side of the Ergen equation is the gas density is the gas density so let's find the gas density as a function of P 
where do we start? We start from the continuity equation, which is the conservation of mass. So you know that mass is conserved even if you have reaction. So the mass flow rate at any location throughout the pipe, throughout the reactor, equals the entering mass flow rate. And the mass flow rate can be found through density and volumetric flow rate. So rho times epsilon equals rho naught times epsilon naught. Upon rearrangement, you get rho equals rho naught times epsilon naught divided by epsilon. Where do you get the value of epsilon where do you get the value of epsilon naught over epsilon? Obviously, we already know this because we have used the ideal gas law and we know that epsilon equals epsilon naught times the three correction factor. The first one's related to number of moles, total number of moles. Second one is temperature. The third one is the pressure, correct? And upon manipulation, we can write epsilon naught over epsilon and substitute this equation here into this equation and we get this relationship now we have the density as a function of pressure and temperature as well and other variables as well let's substitute this into ergen equation so now this will yield to this equation of course, we lumped up a few variables together and we called it beta naught. So what is beta naught? Beta naught is a constant that depends only on the properties of the pack bed and the entrance condition. So we lump, summed it up all in beta naught. So now we have a simpler equation. But are we interested in dp by dz or was it dp by dw? Of course, we're interested in dp by dw. How do you convert the z to w? We convert the z to w through the relationship, which is says w equals v times rho b, where rho b is the bulk density, which is the mass of the catalyst divided by the volume of the bed. So if you take the derivative of both sides, you can get dw equals something which is related to dz but first uh, let's write uh, rho d let's write it a different way we can write actually rho b as 1 minus phi times rho c where phi is the void fraction 1 minus phi is the solid fraction and then multiply by rho c where rho c is the density of the solid catalyst check out the units and you'll see that this relationship makes sense okay let's take the derivative of both sides well not yet uh, let's substitute v with the cross-sectional area cross-sectional area times the length of the bed so now we can take the derivative of both sides and we get this relationship we substitute back into this equation and we get this relationship we can simplify it further by defining alpha and alpha is 2 beta naught divided by cross-section area divided by the rho c the catalyst density divided by 1 minus phi divided by p naught okay so there we go we got ourselves a nice looking equation dp by dw simply equals minus alpha divided by 2 t over t naught p naught over p divided by p naught ft divided by ft naught where alpha is given here let's now define y to be p over p naught which is a reflection of how much pressure you lost because at the entrance P over P naught is simply 1 because at the entrance the P is P naught. And then as you go down the length of the reactor, you lose pressure. So the pressure, the, the value of Y reduces from 1 down to somewhere, maybe 0 if you lose the whole pressure. Okay, so in this case, we replace the P over p naught with y and then also this p 
replaced with uh, y times p naught and we get ourselves this nice looking equation or in terms of x where can you introduce x yep you can introduce x here right because this guy simply equals 1 plus epsilon x correct if you remember from chapter 3 or in terms of epsilon the equation is simple as this dy by dw equals minus alpha over 2 times epsilon over epsilon naught now we have a question what is the effect of epsilon and epsilon on delta p what happens if you have a reaction where epsilon is positive that means the number of moles is increasing the volumetric flow rate is increasing as the flow goes down the reactor what happens well let's see if epsilon is large or as epsilon is increasing down the length of the reactor you have the pressure drop increases as well okay there are a few slides that you can read at home so we have dy by dw equals blah 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 for isothermal operation the above equation is only function of x and p you see that already here this is x oops this is uh, x and this is p here okay so dp by dw is function of x and p and from the combined mole balance rate law and stoichiometry we notice that dx by dw equals a function of x and p of course again this is for isothermal operation so now we have two equations that we can solve simultaneously to find the desired x or to find the required w so we have two coupled first order differential equations that must be solved simultaneously how do we solve them a variety of software packages and numerical integration schemes are available for this purpose so you're not going to do hand calculation okay so in conclusion we learned how to write ergon equation in a very simple way so we either write it, write the Ergen equation in terms of molar flow rate for cases where we don't like to deal with x, or we have the Ergen equation written in terms of x conversion, where y is p over p naught and alpha is defined this way and beta naught is defined this way. So with this, we reach the end of segment one of lecture 20 see you soon in segment two